everybody, welcome back to a new video on this channel and today we look into slow builds or more precisely which plugins will slow down your build and how you can figure it out. Here we go. Slow builds are the bane of our existence, productivity and so much more, but luckily they are a thing of the past. Well, soon at least and to some degree, of course, we can't magically fix everything. But if you build any kind of read based application, then this will soon be in your read application too. Roll down. You can already try it out in the latest V8 beta that got announced a couple of days ago, last week actually. And this will come with not only a Rust based bunder, a Rust based tool chain in general, but so much more. And the latest version of Roll Down actually includes something that's relevant for all of us, no matter which framework you use as long as it's uh, something that you build on top of feed, which is the detection of slow plugins. Now, you might not use any Veed or Rolldown or Rollup plugins yourself straight away, but your frameworks such as Nuxt or, I don't know, Tenstack Start, even Nitro, they all might use things under the hood. Uh, on the other hand, you can also say, okay, I'm just using plain view, and then you use, well, still Veed plugin view, for example. And all these plugins have a cost of running. Now, you might not know how high, but we can easily figure it out or let it figure out for ourselves. Let's jump into our demo application and see how we do that. As usual, we have a demo application up and ready, but of course it's not minimal and similar to the last two videos about the nice dev tools that are amazing, by the way, we also here use Elk. Elk is a master and client. It's built on top of Veed with Nuxt.js, but the shown method will work for all the Veed based applications. Now, instead of going the whole route and saying, okay, you know what, we'll just profile the application, we really dive into that. Actually, that, that's an own video on its own. If you're interested in more profiling, let me know in the comments. We will do something that comes out of the box very soon with Veed 8 and with the beta, it is the case already. What we're going to do is first of all, do a PNPM update to update all the dependencies. This is just the Elk main branch at the time of recording, so some versions might not be updated. And after that, we want to switch to the latest Veed beta. And to do so, we open our package JSON. We see some changes here already. Let me close the rest and make that a tiny bit bigger. We look for Veed and we will actually see Veed over here, 727. So here we could just go for 8.0.0-beta.1, which is the current beta. But we even want to be a bit more recent. And instead, we will just use a link from package.pr.new. So if we go in here, uh, paste it already. This is basically the latest commit on main or one of the most uh, recent ones. And this will install the version of Veed that fits to this exact commit. Now, there's one more thing that we want to do here because of course this is uh, a Nuxt application. So we also can go over to the resolutions here and say, you know what, actually we, we can remove the Veed part from above because the dependency itself fine. We want to resolve that to the right version. So here we can say, okay, Veed should always point to uh, this version here, which is, well, the one from packagepr.new. We saved it, it's formatted, it's all good. Now we have to reinstall dependency. Another way we could go is, well, if 800 beta.2 is out already when you watch this video, then you can just install that and it should be in there. Otherwise, you can install beta1 and then say, you know what, yeah, there's also rolldown. And rolldown, you actually want to point to 1.00-beta.54 or later. But as this is all a bit too complex, I would just suggest to stick with either beta2 if it's out already, or the package pr.new link from just before. So this one. That's also in the description if you want to try it out right now, or you can also go to package.pr.new and there is a little button to like, oh, you try it with feed and take the recent one. Keep in mind though, everything that's not released might be unstable, so make sure things do not break. Also, it's a beta um, and it's an unstable part of beta, so yeah, just uh, it's it might not be the best to just ship that straight away, the good thing is, as we just run it locally, we figure out what's slow in our build time anyway. So there's little to no risk if you don't ship it. Otherwise, still, the beta is quite decent and a lot of people switched already, but that's a story for another video. Now back to it, we just installed the whole dependencies again because now we have some overrides, no problem. We also should keep our PMP map to date, but that's, uh, that's all we'll do after video for sure. So now the whole thing will run, all the hooks will run, all good, things are installed. And from here we see now 800 beta 2 is installed because the version is already bumped there, even though it is from package pr.new. Okay, so far so good. So now the only thing you have to do is we can run pnpm build. And this will just run our Nuxt build as usual for the Elk application or 
If you run vite build wherever, that's not a problem. Then we'll just run the same thing. And now we just wait until the build is finished. We already see some warnings that are related to like, okay, ES builds uh, options are used even though they are not necessary anymore. As long as roll down beat itself is detected, then the, that's a good warning for the maintainers. So it's a good idea to, for example, open an issue for uh, unplug in view or also for the Vue.js X uh, plugin to make sure ES build options are not specified when uh, roll down is being used. And now we get all the chunks here, uh, quite quite a few. So let me scroll a bit to the end because here comes the important part. Soon, pretty soon. Still scrolling, we're getting there. A few moments later. And here we go. Plugin timings, warning. Your build spends significant time in plugins. Here's a breakdown. And that will tell us which plugins are actually the ones that take a lot of time. And we see Uno CSS up here to generate the CSS, which kind of makes sense given that Alex based on Unis CSS and well, you have to go through all the files, find the classes and generate them. Then unplug in view setup component pre that's from view macros actually. And doesn't even have to run like that long, I would say the next layer alias and plugin, then the view plugin from V that I mentioned before, and then also the client SSR styles for Nux to extract certain server side rendering styles. I think some of them make sense, like the view plugin, the SSR styles. This is quite high, the Unis CSS one. Um, so that's definitely the trickier part. And also 6% for view setup component pre might not be necessary. So now at least we know which plugins might be the culprits and we have them installed in our v.config. Some of them, of course, we can't just say like, let's throw at the view plugin, this is view based, so that won't really work, but um, we can do a few things. Let's take a look what we can do after we take a look at the next warning. Because as this is a server side render build, we also see that there is yet another chunk uh, madness going on here. And here we have another warning. So this is then for the server side part. And here we see Nux layer aliasing 12%, once again, the unplugin, then the SSR styles for server side rendering. Unus CSS is way less, of course, because a lot of the findings are already there. And then the view plugin. Okay, and now we know which plugins cause some issues. Now the big question is what does that help? Sometimes it can be really helpful to say, okay, we can just configure the plugins. For example, oh, it should not take a look at node modules, you know, the, the classic problems. That's a common thing. So we say, hey, please only take a look at, I don't know, the view files. Most of them already have quite sensible configurations, but you can still tweak that in your v.config. But of course there is more to do. And one of the things is to make plugin authors aware of that because maybe some plugin offers don't know that their plugin doesn't run well in your big project. So it would help a lot to raise an issue in the repository and thanks to the naming, it should be quite easy to find which plugin it is with information and say, hey, this takes a significant amount of time. Sometimes the answer might be, okay, can't do much. You process a lot of data, so that's that. But there is always an opportunity at least to tweak things. And one of the opportunities was already used. This actually came up when I did the same with nux.com and ran it. And interestingly, the nux test utils, so the a plugin that was run with the nux test utils called nux root stuff, this was first of all running and build, which isn't really necessary. But most importantly, it was also taking quite some time because there was no filter. And after sharing results with the rest of the nux team, Daniel quickly said, okay, hey, let's go, let's add a filter here, this was also converted from an unplugin to just a plain Vite plugin because, well, it runs in Vtest, so we can just make it a Vite plugin. It's not something you have to run for other scenarios. It's only running in this test scenario, so you're good. And with that change, the time already went significantly down. Now, of course, that plugin shouldn't run build the first place, but that would be a next step to take a look at. And if you wonder what kind of filters I'm talking about, well, this is a new thing with the Rust-based rolldown bundler, and it's called plugin hook filters. There's also an issue I created in the E18E initiative, so to improve the ecosystem, where actually all of the Veed, Rollup, Unplugin, and also like Rolldown plugins should have hook filters, so the communication overhead between the JavaScript and the Rust runtimes are reduced. Because if you think of that, okay, you have Rolldown, and Rolldown is saying, okay, here, there's a plugin, I run that, and I run this for every single file. It would be really good to know, okay, I can run it for just a subset of files. Now, commonly in plugins, you just have a check like, oh, okay, if, I don't know, the file ends with .view, then run it, otherwise do nothing. Uh, so some kind of like early return condition, but it's not really helpful for the Rust environment because they still have to run the function and then they have to make a call, get the result back. 
quite annoying. That's why now there are plugin hook filters, so with regular expressions, that's way easier and they can be evaluated also on the Rust side early on and we can just skip going through all the files and running a function that doesn't do nothing in the end. And if we now have a look at the findings from our ALK repository here, then we see one of the plugins was from unplugin view setup component and here the pre-plugin, that's actually from view macros as I said before, so if we here take a look at the pre-plugin, we have that unplugin here and we also see that this does not have any hook filters. We have a transform include and a filter function, but that's not really helpful here because we still have to invoke that again and again. So simply here, hook filters are missing and a PR could fix this, reducing the time that this plugin would run and skipping unnecessary files. A kind of similar thing actually applies to the layer aliasing part because, well, here actually the transform part has a filter, which is great. Resolve ID doesn't have a filter right now and we might not be easily able to do that. There are some ways to say, okay, you know what, it should be part of layers and we set them before so we can construct a regular expression out of that. But there's also more. There is a transform function down here that actually is only relevant if the meta framework is not V, otherwise we skip it. So technically this whole transform function here could be removed if V is being used. So here is definitely room for improvement. And you might know how to do it or take a look and think, hey, this is not that complicated because actually adding these rules isn't that difficult and there are a lot of plugins where these aren't added yet, so that's your chance to contribute. And otherwise, just making the people aware that this is a thing and says, hey, this runs slow here, and V tells me, or Rolldown tells me, the plugin is running for quite some time, though I feel it shouldn't, is already helpful. So, what's the biggest takeaways here? First of all, you can use the V8 beta, the latest version or the latest Rolldown version, to figure out which plugins are slowing down your build. Important disclaimer, the numbers and the percentages are an indicator. They are not 100% accurate. They're not like wall clocked. And if you, for example, use plugins that use certain hooks, then sometimes the waiting time for other plugins could also be relevant here. So always take it with a grain of salt. It's an indicator. It's not like, ah, oh, this is 100% the case. Still, they should help you pointing down problems. And then you can do two things or three things actually. Change the configuration of the plugin report the issue, that's always helpful, and the third, even contribute to make things better. Link to all the issues shown and to the PRs that I will send probably after recording this video, if I happen to find the time before this goes online, because, well, it's, uh, I don't know, an hour or something. I have to cut it now. Uh, we will see there. Nevertheless, let me know what you think about it, if you think that's helpful, and if you already tried out the latest V8 beta, and uh, hopefully your build time went quite a bit down. Other than that, have a great time, take a look around the channel, and see you next week. Happy hacking.